and let's do it to it it's corked stats powered by the mayo media net here on youtube and presented by jock market download the daily fantasy app for free they're going to match the first hundred bucks for free if it's free it's for me can you believe it is the last friday show the last freaky friday show the fastest show in mob absolutely anywhere with your host the big dude with the big mouth from the big apple big johnny stud coming to you worldwide from brooklyn new york as always we coming out the chair as always death taxes sun rising in the east setting in the west and a big dude up before the crack of dawn to bring you this bad boy there ain't nothing like it anywhere internet big corporation fios cable box included doing the things that we do me and you the core stats crew with the granular analysis breaking it down the nuance and the context and everything else going on around the world of baseball the three pillars of profit we're doing daily dfs jock market base props the whole kit and caboodle friday fantasy show we're gonna do the drop zone that's been very effective i kind of mine all of the lineup cards for the past you know 14 days or so looking for healthy players that are no longer playing that we don't want to just skip over and start and then we got some bets we're gonna have a little bit of fun with these over 1.5 f5s today they are on DraftKings, fully available i'm telling you these books are crooked man crooked as heck you gotta go to mlb which makes sense then you have to look for innings and then after innings it's f5 and then totals it is so it is just absurd they don't want you seeing these things for a reason it's kind of how you know right here's a good lesson you're only taking flack when you're over the target when people are attacking you you're probably on to something all right enough of that we need more of this let's do it everybody we got the 826 stack attack we're gonna run it back stay in the black yes we did manage to squeak out a profit yesterday that money line parlay at plus 144 will do it again hitting plus money odds is a good thing oh how's that for a lesson please rate review and subscribe to the audio only pod i'm gonna beg you for a youtube like in about three minutes once we put on this clinic who we got first it's the let's go let's go they're going up against chad cool cat and those rocky roads 516 ERA 152 whip 827 OPS all the attack metrics firmly in place right we're looking for over 47 ERA over 14 whip over 800 OPS cool checking all the boxes pop the hood not so good the FIP Sierra deserved ERA all north of five and a quarter kind of validating that ERA right you always want to be careful with ERA 16% K too low 10% walk too high let me know when you heard this song before single digit swinging strike and the below average chase rate leads us to that very high in zone contact rate remember let the stats sing to you we're only going to be here for a few more days allow the lessons that we kind of laid out here to stick with you no one is going to care who wins this game in a couple days maybe outside of a rabid Mets fan the thing that matters are the lessons the things that we're doing here the application is at the center of it I really like to think every single day we leave you with a feather stuck in the cap because those are the things that matter and if you're really sharp and apply them correctly you'll start to say hey a lot of these lessons apply in my real life not paying premiums being smart being sharp bucking the trend believing in yourself sticking to a stringent methodological process sorry to get too philosophical but again last friday show i'm gonna leave you with all the feathers you're gonna come out here looking like a big bird let's get back to cool cat remember where we have to get to that contact rate we have to get to that hard hit rate get to that bow rate there are some analysts out there who are too quick to rush to the contact stats gotta be careful we gotta get there first if a pitcher gets a ton of swing and misses and wins a lot in the zone but then allows a lot of barrels that's different than the pitcher who can't get himself in the ideal situation right he doesn't get the swings and misses all right back to cool 23 line drive 43 hard hit nine barrel equals the 360 x woba and more than one and a half home runs per nine again remember with the mush ball back in effect be careful with not only home runs odds for those props we want to be looking for line drives hitters that keep the ball down the idea is the longer the ball is in the air the longer you know the mush has to take effect that is legit i know it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek but it is the truth look for guys with lower ideal launch angles Uh, what i'm getting at is when you start seeing those barrels that are up in the 30 degrees those are all going to be outs 
keep the ball down, and it works in the inverse for pitchers, lefties and righties, both doing damage, 271 minimum BA, 495 minimum slug, and 8 ding-dongs on the year, the problem is the sinker, he's force-feeding it in, 42 use, 592 X slug, and only 10% whiff, that is a pretty poor pitch, you gotta dial down that usage, Mr. Cool, he's given up 6 home runs on that pitch, 20 extra base hits, though, remember, no, a lot of that is cores driven, because, right, that's a bad pepper, but it's that line drive rate, those matter remember line drive rate for bis be careful sticky year over year in season it's a very very good descriptor because it uses a subjective element let's get into the hitters you want brandon finding nimmo last 30 plate appearances against righties 81 contact 13 barrel love that right those are the things that check the boxes across the board we're looking for ba in every daily play we're looking for high iso for total base props and we're looking for plate appearances and ops for jock market DraftKings, FanDuel, and the like but nimmo right not just a contact guy that double digit barrel it matters 333 ba 238 iso 1071 OPS for Nimmo over to my boy Stalling Marty who let us down just a little bit yesterday but hat tip to my man joke out there who just put it perfectly on Twitter these betting base props is yes it's very frustrating you know because you put a guy on he gets a couple walks he gets on base a few times they're avoiding him because he's good maybe even scored a run I felt it with Marte I didn't think it with him it was Lindor you know, these are the breaks, but it is very frustrating. Yes, it is very, very frustrating. One of the things we might be looking to do is, the things I've been talking about is open up the portfolio, lower the risk, and look for combinations, and allow it to open up. Again, yesterday, if you did the mix and match with our two players, which was Newt Bar and Marte, meaning, like I said, the point six on the base hit prop, and then you started to mix and match home runs and total base stuff, Newt Bar hit a home run, right? So a lot of times, remember, the model doesn't know exactly. It's just, you're hoping to hit that boop. That bloop. All right. Nimmo looking really good. We're going back to stalling Marte. Last 50 plate appearance against righty. 78 contact, 12 barrel. 348, 217, 953. Triple slash. Remember, that's our triple slash. BA, ISO, OPS. Because OPS counts walks. Walks will kill you for total base props, like I just said. So we always want to keep our eye on all the plates on the scale. And the 403X Woba in that span. Something, again, you really want to look for. The combination of EV and launch angle. Let's wrap it up with Mark Kanya. I know I recommended him yesterday. He sat, so he's playing today. Last 30 plate appearance against righty. This is cartoonish. 375, 417, 1292. With six extra base hits. He's going to be cheap for daily play. He's going to be cheap in jock market. We're absolutely going to rock Mark Kanya today. And then again, this is fun clip that the guy didn't play but i was talking about which is funny one of my favorite analysts was talking smack about using the granular pitch data which okay i mean we're gonna leave that alone maybe i don't think they're talking to me i like to think we do a better job of framing it than most but what did we say about pete alonzo yesterday don't worry about the last seven last 14 because he's in the smash spot this is the underpinnings that he thrives and alonzo hit a home run so this is what it is again i'm not saying it was at me but don't even people that you look up to, I think that's a lesson. Again, more feathers are sticking out everywhere. Even when someone that you really look up to puts down your own work, you can't just say, all right, I'm going to shift. No, 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 no. If you believed in it, you dig your feet in the sand. Not to be stubborn, but you dig your feet in the sand because of the work that you've done. All right, let's get into the next stack. We're looking for the Washington Nationals. Yes, believe it or not, going up against Mike Minor. We love picking on him. 644, ERA 16, whip 906, OPS, the FIP, and deserve the array north of six. Single digit K minus walk, 29 0 swing, 90 in Zocata, right? So again, there's that song that we sing, the disciplinary song. So sing me the song of Mike Minor not being able to find his own. But that's what the, that's what's up. You, when you don't get swings and misses, you walk too many guys in relation to strikeouts, you end up behind in the count, and if you can't induce chasing, meaning you're not convincing enough around the edges, you end up in the zone. That's when you go to the zone contact rate, and if that number is at 90, you're not winning in the zone, then you can get to those delicious contact stats, and there are quite a few. 47 fly ball, 10 barrel, 5.5 blast equals what? You, the handsome walrus in the back. 2.3 home runs per nine, all the stuff we're looking for. It's been really bad, especially to righties, the vast majority of hitters have a 312 BA 989 OPS. They've hit 14 of the 18 home runs. His entire arsenal stinks. There's not a single pitch with a sub 475 expected slug. But of course, what's the culprit? You, Mr. Dane, one of our favorite supporters. I'm trying to work you people in as we get on the way out of here. Look, I even got some notes. Who do I mean to stream out? My dude J Rod always supporting the show. Kalo always supporting the show. Marv always supporting the show. Retweeting our stuff. The Walrus and Tug. We love you. We see you, man. Body, I love you. I see you. All you guys, thank you so much. 
the let's do it right now. Get down there, press the like button, because that is what got us to the four. That's what got the show picked up for football. I'm going to miss you for baseball, but we don't know where that's going to be. Maybe we'll be doing it somewhere in some iteration. Not important. Press the like button, because they matter more than it should. Let's get into my minor again with the fastball 42 use. Why is that such a problem? No, you can have a fastball at 42 use, not with 19 inches of vertical ride. That is one of the highest I've seen. Remember, we don't want it high. We want vertical ride down. Sometimes people even quote that incorrectly. We want it flat. We don't want it steep. The idea being that way you could throw it up in the zone. It won't sink the way a hitter expects it to. And right being up in the zone is further away from the core of the bat and will prevent contact and then there's also the deceptive element right you spend your entire life looking for fastballs to drop 14 to 15 inches and one that doesn't is going to fool you and the ones that dive too much sink into the heart of the zone so that's a problem with minor again nuance and context at the center of a lot of we do so one of my favorite plays today is joey manessis listen hat tip to us gold star on my big nose he's on all of our teams because he popped on the leaderboard we added him before i even knew who he was and now he's taken off he has killed lefties year to date this is straight up ridiculous 82 contact 21 barrel 21 blast 407 370 12 26 ops with three shama llama ding dongs a five 25 x woba and i just wrote fastball killer there wasn't a huge sample but the numbers are just ridiculous i use the word cartoonish but I, I absolutely mean it just ridiculous get with manessis today he has a chance to be the top player on the board then my man nelly cruz last 30 plate appearance against lefties he's woken up you woke up the you know sleeping dragon and giving him a terrible resolve last 30 plate appearance against lefties for nelly 13 barrel nine blast very good 370 ba 296 iso 10 86 ops with four extra base hits you can get with nelly today he's kind of been universally discarded by the market with probably good reason he's looking pretty bad he's a little long in the tooth but guess what it's warm and he's a good hitter he put him up against bad pitchers he's gonna do his thing and i'm gonna finish up with kybert ruiz i want to be very careful here he's very good fastball hitter 95 contact 425 x woba but it kind of ends there outside of him hitting well the past couple days i just like to circle catchers whenever they do pop although i do be looking down i have real muto also but real muto is very expensive so maybe that's the okay all so two options for your daily play. Real moves are very hard to back in DraftKings. I've always found as good as he is, that money I think you could spend more wisely and get a you know competitive score from your catcher. The reason why Jock Market is so awesome, please download that app. We are just killing it. Because you're not forced into that. You don't have to play a catcher if you don't want. But a guy like Ruiz could be like a $3.50 player. Now, I don't think he's going to return the $25 max share, but I do think with a double and a couple of runs, he could finish, you know, as a $6 player, which is not great if you paid $6.50, but it's very good if you paid $3.50. So again, why we're done so well at Jock Market, because it really, really matters how you use, you know, the application, not just the player names. You know, people often want an easy solution. Can I just run all these guys out here? Well, I would say the model probably thinks they're all going to get a base hit. So yeah, you could probably 19 parlay the base hits. Other than that, you have to start getting into the more detailed stuff. All right, let's do the last stack. It's the Fightin' Phils from Broad Street against Bryce Wilson, 574 ERA, 144 whip, 850 OPS, all the attack metrics in place to fit an expected ERA north of five and a half, which we love, 15% K to 6% walk. Now that's kind of interesting. This is actually a good thing. Now this is, again, application context, da 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 I know people hate hearing it, but it really doesn't matter. K minus walk is good, and I love it, but remember, K minus walk can be deceiving because it doesn't tell you where it lands right you can get a five different ways 20 minus 15 16 minus 10 10 minus 5 right so it came in this walk awesome this is the k minus walk you're really looking for when it comes to base hit stuff because the k rate's very low at 15 but the walk rate's really low at six something you do have to look for when a lot of these trashy pitchers are just walking the yard and again that'll get you back to sending frustrated tweets because your guys up there maybe made some good contact foul the ball off and this guy can't find his own so we're looking for guys to find his own bryce finds his own he's just not good at winning in it the whiff rate below 18 chase rate below 29 in zone contact rate over 89 that's like checking boxes across the board again the low walk rate is awesome gas cans what a low walk rate is everything to us get up against bryce wilson the 
line drive rate north of 22. The hard hit rate north of 43 is the 370x Woba, nearly two home runs per nine. So Bryce Wilson, not any good. We have a chance to just rock this guy right off the bat. Lefties do would work. 317BA OPS north of 1,008 home runs. Though I did have to back it up. Righties have hit seven as well. Bryce Wilson, just not great, but lefties really doing the work. The problem is the fastball. 18 inches of ride, just ridiculous. Him and Myers is the problem why they're so bad, right? So again, I hope you're seeing as we go forward the way to reverse engineer a lot of this pitcher work, right? So it's it's very easy. Your is very high. His whistle high is garbage. Not enough because you really want to be looking at how they're deploying these things and what gets them in trouble. So let's get into Wilson again. That 18 inch ride, 8 inch of horizontal run. The run is okay, but that amount of ride is really going to get you in trouble. And the big problem here, he cannot locate the breaking stuff either. The curve and the change have an X slug north of 630 with nine total home runs. That is just ridiculous. So again, there's your answer, right? He, he can't get chases with the breaking stuff. He's afraid to throw the fastball because of the vertical attack angle. So he ends up having to throw the breaking stuff in the zone. It fools nobody and ends up in the seats. So let's look at Kyle Schwarber, his last 70 plate appearance against righties. 51 hard hit, 23 barrel, 274, 242, 872 OPS. Those are a touch lower than generally we look for. However, he has nine home runs against off-speed stuff from righty. So we know Schwarber is very patient, which again, I know can sting you with the walks. Like I said, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but the fact that he bats first and we have the high implied team total, I think covers up. The, he's going to walk at least once today. You just have to know that, right? It's probably going to happen. But the first hung breaking pitch is going in the seats. I think Schwarber hits a ding-dong today. Then give me JTR, last 25 plate appearances against righties, 50 hard hit, 25 barrel, 13 blast. So again, not nothing. Be very careful with narratives, people. Ramuto, when he's on, when he's healthy and sticking it, he is really good. Those are no joke. 417 BA, 292 ISO, 1148 OPS, four doubles, and a 491 expected Woba in that span. He's been phenomenal. And then, oh boy, Bryson Stott, gold stars everywhere. He was on every 15 team league that I have. We picked up on that. We, you know, we went through the up and down. We were watching, we were tracking. He got sent down, he came back up. And now he's worked his way back into the lineup. He started lighting up the leaderboard. We picked up on it. Added him for cheap. He's been excellent. Bryson Stott, last 30 plate appearance against righties. 63 hard hit, 25 barrel, 421, 438, 1171 with a cycle. Uh, it was actually two doubles, right? So it was a single, two doubles, a triple, and a ding dong. The thing with Stott we got to look out for that I missed was he's batting third on JTR's off days. So Ramuto and I think Embalm were both off yesterday. And so Stott will hit third. So that's something, again, to keep in the front of your mind. As we're going forward, right, after the show kind of disconnects and goes off the air, this iteration, we're going to be bringing football like, whoa, wait till you see the stuff I got for you. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. It's going to be really, really good and different. I think that's what really matters. I've aimed to add value to the betting space like I try to do here. I think we've succeeded. Uh, again, Mail Media Net, awesome. Woohoo! Rate, review, subscribe, yo. Patty Mayo is the Mac Daddy, Mac Chilla up in here. Y'all love that dude. He is so, he is so freaking cool, man. He is so cool. All right, so that's a stack attack. Schwarber, Stott, Rel Muto, the Phils, the Nats, and those Let's Go's, Mets Go's. The stack attack brought to you by Jock Morgan. Download the app because it's a lot of fun and we make money. And they're going to match 100 bucks, which is pretty good. I think maybe more than that. The match 100 bucks is like enough to do some damage, which is great. And I think it actually could teach you a good lesson about learning how to deal in percentages. And I know it kind of turns people off. You know, you bet 20 bucks, you need, you know, 10%, <laughs> which should be awesome. It's like two bucks, who cares? But that's what I mean. You have to disconnect from that, right? So that's probably one of the biggest reasons that a lot of betters fail. Here's another feather coming in, incoming feather alert. The expectations are ridiculous, you know. And until you can prove that you can make sustainable profit, you should be betting with big cash. But you... You're not going to get a real profit unless you belt with big cash. You see how, like, the chicken and the egg thing happens. So put the cash to the side. Get the method down first. Get the process down first. Prove to yourself you could be profitable in a live betting market for 30, 60, 90 days, and then go live. And you'll see how many times you fail before you go live. You go, wow, Johnny, just save me a ridiculous amount of cash. Although it's fake cash, but, hey, man, saving fake cash can be good, too. All right, let's do the fantasy end. Of course, it's... <laughs> It took me to the end of the season, literally, quite literally, the very last like two shows to figure out what to do on Fridays. Fridays are very difficult, right? We know we're not going to be here for two days. It's hard to add 
people recommend ads for Sunday. You know, we do the ad for people that do point league, home league stuff for Friday. But it changes again on Sunday. And playing time changes, like there's stuff we ordered, and that kind of put the light bulb up for me. So that's what we do in calling the fantasy drop zone. So I mined all three, you know, I don't even know what you call it, last 21 playing time scorecards, lineup cards, I guess you'd call it. And the dog crusher three really wigging out. Someone <laughs> someone throwing a thing of bone, man. Jeez. Um it threw me off, man. All right, so I mind to look for hitters because I am mean, not to be selfish, but right, I'm a player on the thing about myself as an advanced player. I'm really getting into high stakes NFBC. This is my second year in it, but it takes a lot of work. You gotta be very good. One of the failures I found I had was skipping past healthy players when setting my lineup because look out, he's healthy. You know, so you don't see the red box, you don't see the Swiss Army thing, whatever. Um, you know, so you, there's no worry about health. So you, it's easy to just gloss path, especially like players that are okay. So let's go through it. You're going to see exactly what I mean. So for the DC Draft Champions players out there, NFBC players setting stuff on Fridays, here's about nine or ten names or so. Players that just might be viable. And again, if you're playing Draft Champions, if these 50-round leagues you don't get to add to them there's no waiver so you're stuck with what you drafted and that's when you end up with these guys like i love when people ask who's playing aaron hicks well if you drafted aaron hicks as you thought he might be the leadoff hitter for the yankees at some point which he was so you probably handicapped a good spot he just stunk you know and now you're might have been stuck with him not realizing that you know he's not playing really so drop aaron hicks drop jaron duran for boston they've worked him down the lineup then out of the lineup kike hernandez is back and duran's just not clicking doesn't mean he's gone for good it's just not good and we're running out of time we got to catch up where we haven't my boy g man Choi, he was really murdered but i liked him because in a league where you get to set lineups more than once a guy like him can be in a very great spot against all righties right against he's he's left-handed batting third gonna crush right-handed pitching so you get him in these really good spots sometimes. He's just been bad, and now he's losing playing time on the way out. Forget G-Man Choi. I have my boy Santiago Espinal, who I loved for Toronto. He was a huge hit for us. You know, same kind of draft champions formats, but now with, with Merrifield acquisition and Biggio now is starting to play, Espinal has set three of the last six games. So, you know, that's all you need to know. Once you're starting to set half the games in a week, that's the red flag. I don't think you drop Espinal yet, but he certainly is on the watch list. Marcel Ozuna for the Braves is a draw. He's kind of scum, and he's not playing. They brought him in. Forget this guy. Get rid of him. Rafael Ortega, another guy that I had on my list. You know, he was leading off towards the end of the year for the Cubs. He finished very strong. I thought maybe to at least get some platoon love, maybe take a step forward. No, he showed some glimpses, but now he's pretty much fully replaced. Replace Rafael Ortega to my dude, Connor Joe. These are all guys that this my recommendation list for late pops for playing time. And a lot of them got an opportunity. They weren't any good. But I think that probably makes them good candidates for next year, right? You're not going to pay premiums for these guys. But drafters tend to look at him and, oh, he stunk. Connor Joe is probably going to get another run next year. So Connor Joe for Colorado, forget him. Trace Thompson for the Dodgers. Forget him. He was another... First of all, the Dodgers just kind of manufactured these young kids. He started playing every day. He started crushing every day. He even hit home runs on some quality hitters. Pitchers, I'm sorry, I should say. And he found a bench, and he's out. You know, the Dodgers are very deep with um, guys coming back. And then the big surprise for me was, this is not a drop, but this is a really must-watch. Dylan Carlson, who I love for the Cardinals, has sat the last three games. So that's a worry. you got to keep it on. You can't just run him out blindly, right? Name value of Dylan Carlson. Well, that's not the case anymore. He's been kind of replaced. Lars Newtbar is the guy in red right now. So there you go. Duran, Hicks, Choi, Espinal, Ozuna, Ortega, Joe, Trace Thompson, and Dylan Carlson all found their way onto the fantasy drop zone list. Okay, that is two of three pillars of profit. My boy Meatloaf would say two out of three. Two out of three in bed. Let's do some bets, man. Let's try and make some money. What do you say? Um, let's see, we've actually been profitable like a couple days in a row. We smashed a big parlay the other night. I'm just not, I'm done tweeting emojis. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm not, I've done some losing. It didn't feel right. You know, right? Like, what kind of sucker would do that? I'm just not that tight. Maybe, maybe that was uh, the universe calling to me to stop doing that stuff. I try not to make it braggadocious, but, you know, it's, it's fun. People are into it. You know, you get interaction, and again, it's advertising and stuff, but 
I guess people, I don't know. It seems funny. Uh, people seem to dig my work, win, lose, or draw. I think they kind of understand all the work that goes into it. And again, another hat tip to Patty Mayo. You want to thank him for all the tools that he brought us. But once the show goes, so do the tools. Sorry, Charlie. Them is, is the breaks. But because of Pat Mayo, we are going to finish strong. Implied team total, starting pitcher ranks. The daily pitcher sheet comes out. I run the algo, score the games. We grade the players. We give you all the jock market hits. I mean, everything you could ask for. And the bag of Cheetos. All right, let's get up into it and make some mass money. All right, I got a base hit parlay right off the bat. These have not been good. I think the last... Oh, no, no. We hit two nights ago. We missed last night. This one uh, almost ended up on the cutting room floor. The, the, pro, the price is nosediving. Like, I literally set this at plus 100. By the time I was done, it was at minus 112. So I anticipated a minus 115 incoming. Once it gets to minus 120, I don't think I'm looking to do this. In fact, if you don't want to pay the minus 115, if you're a cheapskate like me, I understand as well. Or if you want to go back to the beginning and make the, just run, try and run the board on base hits, go for it. It's Friday. Who cares? You know, as long as you bet the little bit, remember, risk always at the center of it. Anything can work inside of a plan, providing it's strictly regimented. You should never, ever, ever be betting more than 0.10 of a unit on a parlay. You should never be betting anything more than 0.05 of a unit on a more than three or four leg parlay. Let's say more than four leg, right? These kind of lotto tickets that people love. But I get it. It'd be fun. I run the model. Sometimes I'm curious how it does. And, you know, you run the board. You want... You want to pay. But anyway, the base hit parlay, we laid the ball out. Keep me brave. The Nimmo is going to be leading off 333 BA, 1071 OPS list, 30 plate appearance against righties. The contact rate up over 80, double digit bow rate. So it's not just nothing. Give me Nimmo, finding Nimmo, leading off. He should get a base hit to lead off the game against Chad Cool. Pair it up with my boy JTR, who we mentioned, just killing righties last 25 plate appearances, 417 batting average, 25 barrel, 13 blast. That was good for a 491 expected. Well, he's going to be hitting in the top of the lineup, and they have an implied team total via my algo up over five and a half, which is when you start to go at it. So it could be Nimmo and Real Muto, two first inning singles, hopefully, to cash this one for us. Then next up, I had to go with my boy, Joey Manessis. Usually my total base props are in the plus. This one, again, the books are kind of on to us. Manessis, just gaudy, ridiculous, cartoonish numbers against lefties on the year. 82 contact, 21 barrel, all of those a blast. 407 BA, 1226 OPS, a 525 expected wall by, and he just crushes fastballs. Remember, minor forcing that in 42% use for the 19 inch horizontal uh, vertical ride. I'm sorry. His tr fastball is a trash ball. Manessis, gonna yoke him. Might even go yard today. Give me a whole bunch of Manessis. He's my top play on jock market today as well. And then I'm gonna wrap it up with I know we're getting fun if you, if you, if you see me pairing three things. You know, I'm getting ready to go off the rails. Well, it's the last Friday show. Let's have a little bit of fun. Well, if you see, I did star it. For the more serious players, what am I talking about? We got an F5 team total over 1.5 parlay. I've got the Braves, I've got the Tigers, and I've got the Pirates. That's a plus 476 if you're feeling antsy in the pantsy. Or probably more responsibly would be a round robin. Again, people often ask about round robins. Make sure you do the math first. Round robins only work in these price ranges. So it's actually very funny. This is something we've picked up. Hat tip to the listener that... Uh, told me to like dude he's like you run an f5 model why don't you run the team total f5s and i was like dur, dur, i don't know i actually thought maybe it was too niche but once it's on DraftKings, i consider it ubiquitous what am i getting at you want to make sure so round robin let's just stop real quick and do another lesson again feathers in the cap sticking out like crazy today around robin people three legs three bets all unique a plus b b plus c a plus c the idea being, if each combination of that pays off more than plus 200, then you can profit on two of three. That doesn't work with really long odds. I'm very weary of people, be weary of handicappers, suggesting round robins, which are a good idea, but only providing the mathematics work out. You don't want to put yourself in a situation, this happens, I'm dead serious, where you play around Robin, you hit two of three, but it's still a losing venture. That's not smart. That's not a smart idea. You know, and I generally don't do that. I generally don't tell people you're right, uh, I'm right, you're wrong. We all just do things differently. There are a hundred and one ways to skin a cat without scratching his butthole, as my grandfather used to say. But 
just be careful that so these hit work because they're generally at minus 130 minus 140 which i don't like to pay that kind of juice which is why they pair up so well putting you over the 200 which is what makes the round robin viable but i didn't want to have to explain all that i figured i could do it with the motor mouth so give me the braves the tigers and the pirates now all of these ring on the f5 model if you're curious you can check it out every day it's free again thank you patrick murdoch mayo the man behind the madness i put it on patreon don't worry it's not patreon it's free Patreon for you and Metron, just so you can kind of catch all my work without all the yimmy yammer. I get it can be annoying. Trust me, I know. I am very, I am extremely self aware. Trust me, I do, <laughs> I do not think I'm quiet and not annoying sometimes, but that's kind of how I do my thing. You go check it out on Patreon at MLB Moving Averages as well. And again, it's all free. Check it out, use it up against your work. But I do run the F5 model, and when I get a ring at 0.85 or more meaning i'm over you know meaning if it's 1.5 i'm at 2.35 projection or more i want to be over that two and a quarter mark cleared it which we do so we've got braves we've got tigers we've got pirates let's try and do it really quick okay first we have braves braves are going up against jose quintana who is pretty good Right? No question. He's given up two on runs each of his last three. But the thing that I had here, Atlanta just absolutely kills left-handed pitching. I mean, they're one of the better, if not the best, left-handed hitting team. Yeah, Team 344 Woba. I mean, you have to understand, that, like, implies more than five runs. There's no way to get to 344 Woba without implying five runs, at least. So I think this is a bit of a misprice. Again, this is where books are kind of stuck. They don't want to go to two and a half because Quintana's good. They should be going to two, but they don't want to force the push. So they're just going with the with the juice at 1.5. So we're going to juke them there and parlay it. You understand how, again, we work our way into hopefully a sustainable situation. Right, so give me the Braves to get the Quintana for two. Again, asking for very, very little. I, I almost feel like you don't have to really handicap these things too much. Then we got the Tigers going up against Glenn Otto. I, I, he's, he's just not very good. I think this one is the Tigers' offense, really, the culprit. Otto's given up two earned runs or more in 11 of his last 13. Yes, it was the last two he didn't give him up. The opposite of buying the dip is selling the rip. We want to go after this guy. The Tigers still are an offense. I, I know they hardly, hardly represent one, but they are, in fact, an offense. You know, they did score 15 runs this week, which is just terrible. But I do think they'll get two through five off Otto. Again, it sounds, you know, I don't mean to joke about it, but it, it, the, these are, these are, these lines are giving books headaches, man. That's why they're pulling them. They don't want to put them out. And they, they often mess it around. And a lot of places won't offer it. DraftKings being a bit kind of daring. And then give me the Pirates. You know, we'd love to bet on the Bucks, man. I absolutely love to bet on the Pirates, which is probably like the most famous last words that you can have. What do we got? The Pirates up against Bailey Falter. Again, he's okay. He's just not that good. He's given up two earned runs or more in six of his last seven outings. Again, two earned runs is a very kind of normal outcome and it's not at all indicative of a pitcher that's bad the problem again the Pittsburgh offense is just disgusting I didn't want to have to pay juice for any one of these I may round robin to try and get a profit on two or three if not I'll be involved with all three and if we hit them all I'm gonna do my best to not put any emojis all right we're <laughs> we're over it let's just do it real quick because I know I go on way too long breaking news I talk too much Base hit parlay, minus 115. It's Nimmo plus Real Muto. If you are interested, you have to do it now. The price is probably 121 already. It's just nose diving. And the second we hit the market, forget about it, man. We have been shifting lines like crazy. Especially because, hand is, you know what it is? Not just me. Remember, I'm your favorite handicapper's favorite handicapper. Smart people watch this show, put it out to other people. And we've kind of created the culture here. So then give me Joey Manessis over one and a half total bases at minus 105. And then the F5 team total that we did in 7 million words or less. Braves, Tigers, and Pirates are all scoring two runs through five. Okay. Doesn't seem like a lot. And that will do it for the very last Friday show. I can't believe it. You're going to miss me when I'm gone. Man, you are going to miss me when I'm gone because I'm going to miss you when I'm gone. Hat tip to my man, Baines. I know every day, sure as the sun rises, my dude is up in the comments commenting and appreciating us. And we see you people. And it was you that got this show picked up. So I owe you an even though that's the case, I'm going to ask you for a like anyway. Please press the cartoon thumb, rate, review, and subscribe to the 
YouTube channel, the two biggest thanks that you can give us is the five-star review or the promo code MMN downloading Jock Walker, right? They see that. We put up that stat and people want to get with us. So, you know, anything you can do, if it's free, it's for me. I don't just say it. I live it. That will do it, everybody. Enjoy the games. There's a lot of them. Enjoy your day. And when we're done with the book, enjoy that pay. Follow me up on Twitter, MLB Moving ABG. Make sure to tag Patty Mayo. Enjoy the weekend. Last Friday show, only three left. Wow. Peace. Peace.